tell me about yourself. My name is Rita Prigmore. I'm a born Winterstein in Würzburg, Germany on the 3rd of March 1943 at the University Hospital in Würzburg. Um, I was born as a twin, two girls, and because my mother had signed before to be sterilized instead of going to Auschwitz, so then she eloped with my father and when the time came that she had to go in for sterilization, they found out that she was pregnant, not with one, but with twins. So she had to sign again if she wanted to save herself, my grandfather, my great grandmother, and my grandmother and my uncle Otto from going to the camp. So she signed to hand us twins over for research in, in medical research in the hospital there by Dr. Heide. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, that happened then. We were born on the 3rd of March, 1943. Uh, there were four Gestapo's doctors present in uniform. And uh, they took the children, they took us away from my mama immediately. After five days, she could see us. And uh, two weeks later, my mother flee with us. She stole us out of the clinic because she was afraid when uh, the family, the five people that were left, if they go to Auschwitz, she wanted us twins to be with them. But then she had to bring us back to the hospital, the Gestapo. Then in the sixth week, my mama got very scared because she didn't know what would happen. She went up to the clinic and she asked the nurses, where are my children? And they showed her one child, which was me. We were six weeks old. And my mama panicked and she says, where is my other girl? And the nurse walked with her down the hallway and opened the door, which was the bat at that time. And Rolanda was laying in a bathtub with a little shirt on and a bandaid around her head, she was dead. She died of the experiments that had Dr. Heide made. Dr. Heide was a student of Dr. Mengele and made his uh, profession in Auschwitz. We, of course, were the only t gypsy twins. And so he, you know, he used those on us, just like Mengele did in Auschwitz at the same time. He was trying to dye our eyes from brown to blue. So we could be uh, with the human race of blonde hair and blue eyes. And uh, of course, my mama stole me then out. My grandpa was present, my grandfather, he always was with my mama. By the time she got home, the SS was there already. And uh, I guess mama was crying and pleading in the family and they left me there for two more days. Then they came and took me. And from then on, my mama and family didn't know where I was. 1944, a letter came from the Red Cross for her to pick me up. So she picked me up and brought me back home. By that time, some of the gypsies came back from the camps, some uncles and some family. And ever since I've been a child, I've been very sick, fainted very often. And I went to school for three and a half years but they had to release me because of my illness that I had received at that time. And it's been with me to this day. Then I met my husband there because uh, my father was a sports director, my American adoptive father. And I knew my husband for baseball and what the soldiers, you know, do. So I met him, but I went with my father and mother to El Paso, Texas, 1961. I was 19. And two years later, we came back. And then uh, I started working again in the PX. And my husband came in and we married. And my son, Georgie, was born in 1965 in Würzburg. And then we were sent with the military to Fort Lewis. Uh, excuse me, Fort Lee, Washington. My daughter was uh, uh, born there. And then we got out of the service. And during those times, uh, my health got a little bit better but I still used to faint at certain times. 
And my husband got out of the military, we moved back to the state of Washington where my son with my grandsons and daughter lives now. And uh, my health started getting worse, very, very bad. So um, I used, I had to leave my job then and I had the little accident on the way home. And I woke up in the hospital and then my husband was there and then they had made x-ray because I, when I came to my head, my eyes were hurting. And so they asked my husband if he knows if I had surgery as a little child in my head, what was done because I have that big scar behind my eye. And the next day when I got home, I called my mama in the evening and she came over the next week and stayed with us and then that's how she told me the whole story. So then mama says, now we got more proof that something was done. Now we can again go and against the German government and start compensation again because we did start 1954. So I got the kids and my son and my daughter went to Germany I started compensation every year, every week, a few times to Munich. It was just going on and on, but then I had to send my son and daughter back because they couldn't go to school. So and then my mama and I fought the state of Bavaria with a Jewish lawyer and Amnesty International from 82 to 88 to become get compensation. And you finally you got the compensation. <coughs> you got compensation, and and the thing that hurt me the most is we needed documents from Haida. So Amnesty International, which was lucky, I became a citizen. Amer I was adopted by American. I became an American, and so um, with my American passport, I had the chance to go to the East section where the archives are. And so I got to go there with uh, my mama and my cousin, and then at checkpoint Charlie, my mama stayed on one side, and I got to go with my American passport over. And Amnesty International arranged that that I get a copy of Haida's papers, documents, how he made his doctor, where did he learn all this? Of course, Auschwitz with Mengele, and those papers helped me a lot, you know. But they tried to find. Germans don't want to be guilty from anything like that, you know. And okay, uh, the judge just, uh, the judge lady said, um, Mrs. Prigmo, I make you an offer. For the scar in your head, you get nothing because you would get millions. And then your mother could turn around and sue the state because that would prove that Rolanda was killed. In what ways has your experience affected your life since childhood? It affected everything. It, it took everything for me. The biggest thing that affected me was not even the school or my health because I knew what was wrong with me, uh, but it affected me that I had to give up my son and daughter and 17 years of marriage. Beautiful house, I had everything. I had a good husband, he worked for Firestone Company. We had everything. I had more than any gypsies that I can remember during that time. During all the, the days that we, uh, I got compensation and uh, we went home and I passed out. I was in a, ho in a hospital neurology for two weeks. You still faint? You still have those? I, uh, once situations? in a while, yes, because I even stopped to uh, uh, drive a car. And I love driving. I used to put my music on. And my mom and I went every week, every second week to Munich. Würzburg, Munich, Würzburg, Munich, which took a two hours, you know. And then I had I got me a little dog. I had to, you know, sometimes uh, not think of that my son and daughter is over there with a stepmother, you know. It, that hurts. It is so unreal and cruel. And this is why I'm so much against racism, you know, because it's not right. And that's why I'm very happy that St. Gidio invited me to go every place and tell my story, the story of my family, because it is time uh, that we do something against it. Racism, I think it's the cruelest thing that is on earth right now, because we have so many beautiful people from different countries, you know, why we don't need another Auschwitz. I mean, I forgive them, but I don't forget. 
And you know, I went to Auschwitz last year for the first time with San Egidio, and it was hard. I cried at least a week before I cried. I didn't want to go. I felt like something went out of myself from all that I know from it, from the family, not from somebody else, from the family, what they told me. Everybody in the family, even my uncle Otto, had the big Z for Zigoina and then the number. That's why I drive so much for it that we call it Zigoina, gypsies, you know, not Sinti. I, I just aged years to think that my family went through, put those rocks down and then died in there, you know, and whoever came out. Uh, it's just so hard to explain. It's hard to take. And now we have racism and anti-Semitism again. It can't be true. I drive. I go a lot in the streetcar downtown to the doctors or visit people. And you hear the students in the seventh, eighth grade. Ah, we need another Hitler. They should kill all these people. <laughs> you know that hurts. Is there any message that you'd like to share with people that might see our DVD? Yes, I have a message. I have a message to the people, the elder people and the young people. Teach your children to forget and forgive and make sure that there is no racism because we don't need any hate out there. And if people can have a, a feeling for other people. It's the, the racism and the hate and the anger starts at home. So when your children are little and you are, have this family that is always fighting or always spreading racism, we have neighbors that came from here or neighbors that are there, we don't need them here. Don't do that. Don't spread hate and bring up the past in hate and pass it on. It's, it's, a, it's sometimes hard to understand. God gave us such a wonderful world and we destroy it. Not only but take it from it, but also spreading hate and no feelings, no understanding for others. And it, my message is to show love and compassion and help where you can. Because always put yourself in the same position if you would be the other purple person and it would happen to you, you know, because um, hate, hate and disliking to other people, I think that's even worse than if you have a knife in you, because a knife you can take out and the wound will heal, but hate and dishonesty and ungratefulness and not liking other people, it's not right. Because we are all an image of God. And we destroy that by being hateful and spreading hate, and by being racism and spreading anti-Semitism. So always remember that. God forgives us our sins. And we forgive our sins. But not if we continuously spread hate and hurt to other people.